Welcome back to Metals, Money, and Markets weekend in June 9th, 2017. With me, as always, is Mickey Fulp, the mercenary geologist. And from MiningClips.com, I'm Rob Goodman. Well, Mickey, uh, a few things going on here. Uh, big Comey uh, hearings uh, weighed on the markets, and uh, probably uh, with the financial markets, uh, Theresa May um, over in, uh, in England. Um, either way, we had a lot of volatility here. Why don't you walk us through this? Well, the Trump-Comey hearings wrecked havoc in the uh uh, precious metal market, or I should say uh, gold soared almost to $1,300 in, in midweek when the Dems once again, and I spell that D-I-M-S, uh, thought they were going to be able to impeach Trump. Well, that's not going to happen. So gold couldn't break resistance at 1300 fell all the way back to 1266 for a percent loss on the week. Silver lost almost Two percent to close at 1717. Platinum lost 1.6 percent to close at 937. And then you have palladium, which is bucking all trends, hit a 16 year high. Uh, the specs force the industrials out of short positions. It's in backwardation, which really means there's a near term shortage. So it looks up, up and away for the palladium market at this point. Yeah, hey, copper, uh, copper, a nice little gain this week, too. Yeah, it rallied to a nine-week high uh, with a very strong forward curve. I should say a strengthening forward curve. Uh, the Chinese imports unexpectedly surged in May, and this is the off-season for copper. So it closed up almost 2.5% to 262. I would like to mention uh, the ratios, which we track, we don't often mention, but uh, the platinum-palladium ratio is at 1.09. A lot of pundits are saying it's going to go to parity. We haven't seen that since uh, uh, the year 2000, perhaps. And the platinum to gold ratio is now at its all-time low of 0.74. Meanwhile, the energy markets, uh, oil continues to be the story, a uh, big slide here. Yeah, oil lost almost 4%. The bears are really in c control. Very pessimistic uh, market at this point. Um, a lot of this happened on the EIA. Uh, U.S. crude and gasoline stocks were way up for the week. Uh, in addition, Shell... Uh, remove the force majeure they had on in Nigeria. So that's going to add a quarter million barrels per day. Um, and kind of off topic, but uh, for people that live in California, Governor Moonbeam signed a climate deal with uh, China this week uh, because Trump pulled this out of the Paris climate deal. Uh, meanwhile, uh, over in the, the currency markets, the uh, dollar uh, picked itself back up a little bit here. Uh, that was the head story, I guess. Yeah, well, dollar was up basically because the pound and the euro fell uh, when Theresa May lost her majority. Uh, you know, she called a special election to uh, gain more control of parliament, and it absolutely backfired on her. She's lost her majority. It's unknown if she will continue as prime minister. That rate... Uh, uh, weighed very heavily on the pound. Uh, and finally, the loonie was flat over the week, uh, despite the drop in oil. Closed at 0.74. Yeah, and uh, heading over to the markets to button this up. Uh, everything was at record highs there for a while, it seemed like, but uh, uh, kind of an ugly Friday. But uh, still, uh, the Dow seems uh, moving. Well, the Dow closed it all, its all-time high of 21,274. One, the other two markets were off a little bit. Uh, the S&P 500 lost three-tenths of a percent after its all-time high on Thursday to close at 24.32. NASDAQ took a big hit, down 1.6 percent uh, at to close at 62.08. And also after an all-time high on Thursday, the NASDAQ took a, took a big dive on Friday, closed at 62.08 as the tax lost a lot of ground uh, for a 1.6% decline on the week. And the venture uh, continued its slide. Yeah, it looks like we're having the summer doldrums in the spring. Uh, no one cares. Venture lost 1%, closed at 791 uh, for a one-month low. Um, 
really low volumes. There just is no excitement in this market. And I don't expect there to be any excitement till we get to uh, Labor Day.